Does price equal quality? Will a more expensive t-shirt necessarily be of better quality than a cheaper one? I have an obsession with white t-shirts and I want to find the best one possible. But how much do I need to spend to get the perfect white tee with the perfect fit, fabric, and thickness? That's what we're here to find out in today's video. We're going to review some white t-shirts at three different price points, $5, $25, and $100. And we'll review two t-shirts at each price point so we get a better range of options. Starting with the budget-friendly $5 t-shirts, we're gonna go into a store that I haven't purchased from in many, many years, Primark. Pretty sure Primark is as cheap as you can go, so we can definitely find something five bucks or under here. There we go, four pounds. For our second budget-friendly t-shirt, it was hard to find another brand that sells a white tee at $5 or under, but H&M does stock a relaxed fit white tee at six pounds 99, which is about $8.50. That's pretty close, so we're gonna try that one. Oh, I think that's it. Relax fit. And we got it. $6.99. Now, for the t shirts at the $25 price point, we've got the infamous Uniqlo U Airism oversized tee, which I have to be transparent, I am a little bit biased because if you've watched my videos in the past, you probably know that this has been my go to t shirt for a long time. These are the Uniqlo U Airism oversized t shirt. And for that reason, I was hesitating to even include it in the video to not make it unfair. But then I thought, you know what? Let's give it a fair trial. They're not sponsoring me for this. I can say whatever I want. And I haven't tried other t shirts in a while now. So let's give it a fair review and see how it holds up against other t-shirts in the market right now. I'm even gonna get a fresh new one that hasn't been worn or washed so that we can compare it accurately. For the second $25 t-shirt, we're gonna grab one from Cause. Cause is a brand that's very much into that Scandinavian aesthetic with minimal high quality basics. So it'll be interesting to see how their white t-shirt holds up. Perfect. This one is 19 pounds, which I think is about 23, $24. So right on mark with our budget. Now let's move on to the more high-end t-shirts at the $100 price point. First stop is Studio Nicholson. Hello. Hi. This luxury British brand is known for their relaxed tailoring, minimalist aesthetics, and using the finest quality materials. It is a much more understated luxury brand compared to the big fashion houses you know. They focus more on quality and design rather than flashy logos. Their mid-weight compact cotton t-shirt costs 75 pounds, which is about 92 US dollars, which is close enough to 100. I cannot wait to try this. Lastly, we're also going to review the Represent Blank t-shirts. This brand has grown significantly over the past few years, and I've tried their hoodies before, which I quite liked. So I'm excited to see how the t-shirts fit. They're a bit cheaper than Studio Nicholson, retailing at 70 pounds, which is $86. So it'll be interesting to see how they compare. Okay, we've got our t-shirts ready. Now let's put them to the test. Here's how we're going to review the t-shirts. First off, the fabric test. Before even putting the t-shirt on, we're going to analyze the fabric. The things we're paying attention to are softness, thickness, and construction. Number two, the fit test. We're going to try on each t-shirt to see how it fits, whether it's true to size and the overall silhouette to see which t-shirt has the best fit. Number three, the opacity test. I hate it when my white t-shirts are see-through. So we will test the opacity of each t-shirt under both natural light and artificial lights to see how see-through it actually is. And number four is the wash test. We're going to wash each t-shirt according to the care instructions on the label, and we're going to pay attention to shrinkage, pilling, and fading to see which t-shirt holds up the best. Based on these four tests, we'll be able to determine which t-shirt is the best value for money and whether price really does equal quality. Okay, starting off, we have the Relax Fit t-shirt from Primark. All right, first off, the fabric test to be honest, the fabric doesn't look too bad. I was expecting worse for Primark. Just looking at the label here, it is actually 100% cotton, which is a pleasant surprise because a lot of fast fashion brands tend to use quite a bit of polyester or acrylic to cut down the cost of the garments. Um, made in Bangladesh. Just first impressions on the fabric, it doesn't look too bad. We'll have to see how see-through it is and how it actually fits. Okay, so that's the extra small, relaxed fit. The sleeves are a little bit shorter than I would hope. So generally when it comes to t-shirts with a bit of a relaxed fit like this, I like the sleeves to be slightly longer, ideally just above the elbow or around the elbow and for the shoulder to drop a little bit more than this. In terms of length, it's okay. A little bit on the longer side. We're gonna try the small just to see if there's any difference. 
And for reference, I am about 5'7", and like, I'm getting a little bit bigger now, 62, 63 kilos, I think. Not gonna lie, I like the fit of the small better. The length is actually almost the same. It's really not that much longer. And because it's a bit wider here, it just drops a little bit better. It's got a better flow to it. You know what? I changed my mind. After trying the small, I would say this t-shirt is not bad at all for the price. $5 for this. I think this is a really solid silhouette. For the fit test, I'll give this one a 4.2 out of 5. Okay, for a second t-shirt, coming in at about $8.50, we have the H&M Relax Fit Tee. So we've got 100% cotton as well, made in India this time. Similar weight as the Primark one, although it does look a little bit more see-through on a first impression here. It does feel like there's a bit more stretch to it. A few imperfections here and there. You can see there's just a few imperfections with the construction, just like a few loose threads. I guess it is to be expected for a t-shirt at this price point. And <laughs> Funnily enough, actually, if you look on the label here, it's actually a typo. The T of fit just disappeared, or maybe it's a manufacturing issue. It's the Relax Fee t-shirt from H&M. Let's try it on. By the way, just a quick note, I am trying all of these t-shirts in a relaxed slash oversized fit. That's just my personal preference in terms of fit. I like that more modern style with the drop shoulders and more oversized fit. You can easily layer that with a hoodie or something. So take that into account when I'm doing the fit test. However, all of these brands do also have slimmer versions of each t-shirt. So you can still apply this information when deciding which brand to purchase from. Okay, the fit is similar to the Primark one, maybe slightly longer. The sleeves are roughly about the same but just from the naked eye here it already seems more transparent than the other t-shirt i'm looking in the mirror here and like i can see my tattoo underneath it so definitely more see-through so i'm not sure it's gonna pass the opacity test here just for the fit i'll give this one a 3.8 out of 5. okay next up we have my baby my favorite no, no favoritism here. This is the Uniqlo U Airism oversized tee. We all know it, but let's give it a fair trial. Like I said, we're giving it a proper test drive. Fresh version, unwashed, unworn. The white looks nice and bright. So that is one downside, is the fabric composition. It's 53% uh, it's cotton, 30% polyester, and 17% elastomolytiester, something like that. It does use some plastic-based fabrics, which is not the best for the environment. The stitching looks cleaner than the H&M t-shirt and that's what I like about Uniqlo. I think in terms of the quality price ratio it's really one of the best you can get in the market. Again I wish it didn't include any polyester but overall it's still a very good fabric, good weight and good color. So that's how it fits fresh out the box before being washed. The sleeves hit exactly where I would want them to hit. The body is a nice length, not too short, not too long for an oversized tee and it's got comfortable room in the body without drowning in fabric. The only thing I would say, if it was me designing my own t-shirt, I would probably make the neck slightly smaller and the armhole a little bit lower, just because when it's oversized, I like the armhole being slightly lower, giving that more tapered shape to it around the sleeve. For the fit, I'll give the Uniqlo one a 4.6 out of 5. Okay, next up, we are looking at cause now. The fabric already feels super soft, very luxurious. I like it. I like this a lot. This is 100% percent cotton made in Bangladesh. Stitching looks solid. No imperfections so far. Got a few loose threads on the back but really nothing major. Overall great first impression. I think this might be a solid contender to the Uniqlo one you know. Oof. It feels so soft to the skin. I am loving the feel of it on the skin. It just feels silky smooth. <laughs> Not a bad fit. But I have to say, it is a little bit longer. And that's the problem with these Scandinavian brands. They just tend to size for six foot two men. I don't know. I don't know how they do their sizing, but this is the smallest size. It's an extra small. It might shrink in the wash, especially because it's cotton. Cotton is known to shrink a little bit when washing for the first, second time. But out the box like this, I would say this is too long. So I would not keep this if I was buying it for myself. With that said though, if you are genetically blessed with a good height, this could be a great t-shirt for you. Okay, now we've got the more high-end t-shirts closing in on the $100 range. This is the Represent Blank t-shirt. It is not as white as the other ones. That is because they did not have the full white version available in stock at the moment I purchased it. This is their vintage white. Okay, so 220 GSM cotton here. So even though it is more expensive than all of the other t-shirts. At the very least, you're paying a premium to get more heavyweight cotton. We've got some design details that the other t-shirts did not have, like the metal brand tag here on the hem of the body. So this one is made in Portugal. 
and that is probably why it's also a bit more expensive than the other t-shirts. Construction's looking good. I mean, to be honest, I feel like once you get past that 20, 25, 30 dollar mark, the construction tends to be good on most items. Although the fabric does have a bit of a rougher feel compared to the other t-shirts we saw before. My question though is, will this roughness get worse over time, especially after we wash the garments? This one's a four out of five. Wow, okay, <laughs> this is long. This is hella long. Interesting cut on the sleeves. They're quite wide, wider than the other ones, which is good if you have an athletic build. I like where the drop shoulder hits. I think this is a good placement for the drop shoulder. I like the width of the torso, but it is long, even longer than the cause one. And ideally we would be having a pure white version of this to compare more accurately. But I like this vintage white, you know? I wouldn't actually say the fit of it is bad because it is proportionate. When you look at the shape of the torso, the shoulders and the length, of it, it is proportionate. A little bit too long for my taste and for my height, but it is not a bad fit. Like if you had a similar build to me and you were 5'9 or above, I would say this would probably fit you really well. So for the fit, I'll give this one a 3.5. Okay, lastly, this is our most high-end t-shirt from Studio Nicholson coming in at 85 pounds or $115. We have their Pew t-shirt. So like the represent, this is also made in Portugal and made from 100% cotton. The fabric does feel a bit more lightweight, but that does not necessarily mean that it's lower quality. That is a common mistake, actually. A lot of people tend to think that just because your t-shirt or sweatshirt is heavyweight, that means it's higher quality. Those are two different things. You can have a 200, 300, 400, even 500 GSM hoodie, and that doesn't mean that it was made from better quality cotton or that the construction is better. So you have to look at these elements independently of each other. No issues with the seams at the hem. All of the stitching is picture perfect. Sleeves look great as well. There's a nice little detail at the back here with the screen printed logo at the nape. It also seems a lot more oversized than the other ones. So this is gonna be an interesting one to try on. Wow. This is a completely different silhouette to the other t-shirts we've been trying. It's got that oversized fit. However, the drop shoulders are a lot more emphasized and the width of the body is also a lot more dramatic. Actually, it kind of reminds me of the silhouette of the t-shirt from that Yeezy Gap collab. If you have a t-shirt that's on the longer side, you also want the width of the body to be proportionate to that. The material is a bit more on the lighter side. Definitely a good standout piece with a nice silhouette that you can wear on top of like jeans and sneakers like this in summer would look great. I feel like one thing we can notice here is that as you go up in the price range, the designs become a little bit more intricate. The silhouette is a bit more intentional. There's a bit more play around the shape of the garment. But is it worth a hundred bucks? That's for you to decide. For the fit, the silhouette of it, I'll give it a four out of five. I would give it a higher rating, but for me, when it comes to white t-shirts, I highly value versatility. So I would look for something maybe a little bit less oversized, but as a standalone piece, especially when you're not layering anything on top, I think this is an amazing piece. For the opacity test, we looked at each t-shirt under both natural light and artificial light. The most see-through ones were the H&M and Studio Nicholson t-shirts, both scoring a 2.5. Primark was actually not as bad as I thought, although not the best, scoring a 3.5. And the Uniqlo, Cause and Represent were all very good on the opacity, showing little to no transparency. Keep in mind for the Represent t-shirts, since this is a vintage white, not a pure white, this does help massively with the test. But looking at the density of the fabric, I do believe that the pure white version would score similarly. Now onto our final test to determine how these t-shirts hold up, the wash test. We want to see how much each t-shirt shrinks, how the fabric holds up, and if there are any changes in the shape of the t-shirts. So we measured each t-shirt before washing them and we'll compare those measurements to the ones after washing. And to make it simple, we took two measurements, the width of the t-shirts from shoulder seam to shoulder seam and their length. Okay, let's wash these up. We washed all of the t-shirts twice on a gentle cycle, cold, and on a low spin cycle. They were then left to air dry rather than tumble dried, as tumble drying can really mess up your clothes, so I would not recommend it. Okay, so after going through two wash cycles, the game has completely changed. And let me tell you, some of these t-shirts did not hold up. We also noticed that some of them did not iron as well as others. The Primark t-shirt shrunk by one centimeter in width and length, but also lost its shape quite a bit. The length is not even consistent across the t-shirt anymore. It varies depending on where you measure it from. So it scored a measly two. The H&M t-shirt became more narrow than before, but kept the same length, giving it a weird shape that's not as proportional 
proportionate as before, and it was also very hard to iron. The Uniqlo t-shirt shrunk in length by 1.5 centimeters, but had no loss in shape whatsoever, and it was very easy to iron, so it gets a solid 4.5. The cost t-shirt shrunk a bit more, 2 centimeters in length and 0.5 in width, but it was fairly easy to iron and no loss in shape, so we gave it a 4. The Represents t-shirt surprisingly gained an extra centimeter in width and length. I'm still trying to figure out how that's even possible, but my theory is that because it's quite a heavy cotton, the weight of it along with gravity pulled down the fabric while it was drying, causing it to expand a bit. Unexpected, but the fabric and shape are holding up well, so we gave it a 4. The Studio Nicholson t-shirt shrunk the most by 2 centimeters in width and 1 centimeter in length, but it kept its overall shape and proportions very well, and it was easy to iron. So based on all of these variables, each t-shirt was given a score out of 5 for each test, which we then averaged out to a final score. Primark and H&M scored the lowest at 3.2 and 2.4. Then we had a tie between the Cause and Studio Nicholson t-shirts at 3.8. With that said, the score for Studio Nicholson was driven down mostly due to the opacity test, which some people might not mind depending on their style. Represent scored a solid 4, and yes, I didn't want this to be true. I really wanted to be proven wrong and find a new favorite white tee, but Uniqlo made it to the top with flying colors, scoring 4.4. I guess I'm gonna have to keep sticking to these as my go-to t-shirts. But what did we learn today? How much of a difference did price make on the quality of the t-shirts? I would say the biggest difference is when we jumped from the $5 range to the $25 range. The $5 t-shirts didn't fit bad, I actually had a very solid first impression with both of them, but once we washed them is when they quickly deteriorated. They either lost their shape or their proportions after only two washes. The $25 t-shirts had a lot better construction, and although they shrunk a bit in the wash, they kept their shape and proportions, and they were not very see-through. Just very solid t-shirts overall. The biggest differences between the $25 and the $100 ones, I would say were, number one, the fact that they were made in Europe instead of in Asian countries. So probably in more ethical working conditions where workers also got paid a higher wage than some of the factories in Asia. Although I'm sure there are plenty of ethical factories in Asia, I don't want to generalize, but it does usually cost more to produce in Europe. Two, the weight of the fabric. The Represent t-shirt, for example, used more heavyweight cotton than all the other ones, which is going to increase the cost of the garments. And three, the design. There is also a cost sink to good design, and smaller independent brands like Studio Nicholson will spend a lot of time and effort on the actual design of the product, paying attention to every measurement and minute details to make sure the proportions are correct. But I would love to know, which of these t-shirts would you buy? Even though some might clearly be better quality than others, budget is also an important factor, if not the most important. Some of you might be on a tight budget and would rather buy a lower quality $5 t-shirt anyways, or you might have the disposable income and the appreciation for well-made garments to want to invest $100 in a t-shirt. Or you might sit in the middle and find that the middle ground of the quality price ratio at brands like Uniqlo or Cause works best for you. Let me know where you stand in the comments, guys. I'm curious to know. With that said, it's been a fun time. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. I wish you a beautiful day and I will see you in the next one.